Well, you're still watching Plus Politics Special, and our focus today is on women. We will be focusing now on the state and local government levels. Every time we talk grassroots politics with women, it's usually market women. And I'm my question is why? But, well, I'm joined by Aniki Ade, Funket Treasure. She is the executive team lead for Illuminate Nigeria. It's good to have you join us. Thank you very much. And, good of course, we here. still have in the studio Busola um, Okpaolu. She's a broadcast journalist. Thank you. Apparently, you too used to be a broadcast journalist. Well, once a journalist, I'm still always a journalist. A journalist. <laughs> we, never, we never seem to retire from no, this no, job, no, do no. we? No. Anyway, I feel a bit, a bit of pressure now since I had two big wigs, one from radio, one from TV. <laughs> yeah, I started from radio. Ah, that's where I We all that. did. That's, that's where I got my foundation anyway, from. Anyway, let's talk about grassroots politics. Mm. Now, you are of Illuminate Nigeria. You, off the camera, you were telling me about it, uh, giving me a little background information. But let's talk about why whenever we want to have political campaigns or whenever we'll be talking about women, it's market women. Does it mean that the average blue collar or white collar job woman is too prim and proper for political campaigns and discussions, except she's actually holding a political office? Well, I think it's, it's a faulty orientation from the beginning. Um, and I think maybe because it's easier to mobilize grassroots women because from what we've seen so far, the experience with grassroots women, you just need to, to get them together, get them a shoibi, get them some rice and something, and then they're singing and dancing away. Isn't that but isn't that's that not sad? enough. Isn't that sad? It, it, it is sad in multiple ways. It is sad in the, fa in the sense that we have grassroots women who are not aware, who are not informed, who don't know the reason why they're dancing, who they're dancing... Um, for temporary things, it is sad. So that break where it's still plus politics. And uh, before we went on that break, we were making a very interesting point as to why market women instead of the woman who, and I'm not in any way trying to make fun of a market woman here, but we're saying, there are also very intelligent people. We're who can be saying part. they are filling a space, they're in a space, and they're not optimizing the opportunity that that space affords them. You're asking. Are me, you blaming them for that? Do I they will know? blame them. Ignorance? I will blame them for their crass ignorance and for their lack of awareness. It doesn't matter whether you're educated or not whether you're illiterate or not, there is something called native intelligence. You should be intelligent enough to know that, look, my, 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 my children, my girl, my boy, will benefit from good governance. And so, when there is mobilization at the grassroots level, and I'm being asked to come and do this, is it all about dancing and cooking and ashoy B that politics is about? What about them agitating or even asking for positions for their own children? Because it will not end in 5,000 Naira bribes or 5,000 Naira vote buying or maybe even 20,000 Naira. But, but, it's but, but, bigger but, than that. But before we, I leave that, before you move on, let's come talk about the middle class women who you'd, ask, you'd asked me earlier. Why is it that they're not... Um, prominent in politics. Well, a lot of us are career women. We have careers ahead of us. A lot of us are not card carrying members of these parties because some of us can't even... Isn't that a shame? Is it, that a good it, enough it, excuse? It's a shame that we, it, you can we say feel it's that a shame. we're too prim and proper you, you to You can say it's a shame. But whatever political, whatever political decisions are made, no matter how much I, for of one, a, haven't seen it the party I you. want to belong to. It's pretty much like, who do you want to vote for? Candidate A, candidate B, they're not like the kind of candidates I want to vote for. Not voting for. is also a choice. Do you under, it you is have a made choice. a choice, one way it or the other. It is a choice, because so, then you say, look, this is still not what I want. But you still have to vote. You still vote. So you're telling and then me, you go out to so vote and then me there is violence. The, because different political parties, whether it be the biggest or the smallest, they have candidates. And you cannot tell me in all of those candidates, you cannot find one person. If I have not said you a carpet. At the national no, level, did I find any? No. I can't vote for something that I do not believe in. 
But so that, you were trying to make a point. What did you say? Then uh, the, if you, f you don't find a candidate that doesn't appeal to you, it's not a must that you have to vote for that person. Mm -hmm. Then if you also look at where, um, when you said the grassroots, the Ashwe B stuff and the cooking, the politician makes you, capitalizes on that and use them to his or her own advantage. Basically, as a politician, you really have to start from the grassroots. If you're able to mobilize the grassroots, have supporters, it shows how strong you are. Mm -hmm. It shows the kind of potential you have. I'll give you an example. This past election, somebody came out and said, look, I want to vie for this position from, from this um, party. And they said, no, you can't. You don't have supporters. You don't, you don't, you don't have a class of the grassroots. Mm -hmm. The guy left, went to an obscured party, mobilized the people, and you know, he kind of got a number of people. And at the end of the election, then I said, ah, I didn't know that you could mobilize the grassroots like that. Mm -hmm. Come back to us. Come back to us, don't worry. Along the line, we'll give you something. <laughs> and he went back to them. Well, that's a man. What exactly, we're, we're talking about. It can also what? apply to a woman. The but point I want to make before, uh, before we go on is uh, that we have women leaders who mobilize this women. What exactly do you tell this women? How do you engage this, this grassroots women? What do you tell them? What do you tell them is in it for them? them? And I would knowing, like to be a fly on the wall when they're having those women meetings. Honestly, it would be a really good thing to be a flying But again, world. another problem and another question I keep asking, and I ask the first set of guests, why is it that the only thing that women are limited to is mobilizing women as women leaders? Why can't a woman go beyond being a woman leader in the party and not be party vice president? See, that's where party the politics publicity. starts. When exactly. the grassroots women oh. say, yes, we're going to follow you. But these are our terms. This is politics. It is called how, politics. How aware you, are you those give grassroots your terms. women? How, <clears throat> how, what orientation has been given to those to grassroots women? You have asked the question I asked again. These women leaders of parties, what do you tell these mass, these grassroots women when you engage them? What do you tell them? Because look, when you're made a woman leader, you have an enormous responsibility on you to influence people to effect change. And knowing that women constitute more, more, almost half of the population of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So then we're talking of a critical mass here. So how are you using the power of, that, of the numbers to effect change? We cannot keep blaming the men all the time. We have to, 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 to chin up and say, you know what, ladies, we've got the power. Mm -hmm. And how do we begin to use our power? The thing is, I will follow you. I will vote for you. But these are my terms. You make the roads uh, motorable for my children to go to school. You do not come with hate speech because we have to talk in a democracy. We have to criticize what you're doing in a democracy. You provide schools for my children. And then we will not have the likes of uh, Ochaya dying. Ochaya didn't mm. die because of abuse. She died because there was no infrastructure. She died because she had to go to school in another village mm -hmm. because there was no, talking no, about, no so road. Talking about women who have been endangered or have been subject to violence. But Sola, the, and this blame goes to all of us, including the media. The lady who was burned alive in Kogi State, oh. I want to say on TV, Salome. shame on all of us, because it's no longer news. There's no follow-up to it. 
And this no, there is, is. And there is, this is a woman. Women, I, I haven't seen women groups on TV. Oh, I have. Demands. I just returned from Abuja. I was the anchor for the uh, National Women Dialogue, Women Manifesto 2019. What women did, feminists and activists all over Nigeria did, was to converge on Abuja to say no more. We are not going to be reactionary anymore. We have actually declared after, in the course of that conference, declared a state of emergency that regarding is, violence against women. We're saying we're not going to be reacting anymore. We want to be proactive. That is we true. want to say but, no. And at that conference, there was a side event for Salome. Her daughter came. Her children came. But that was, I'm sorry, register. that was a tea party. No, it was Who not a tea party. We in the street? To the streets, I was okay. part of it. To what we part marched of the to the streets. We marched to the, to the women did affairs you get to the ministry. National Assembly? We moved to the women affairs ministry to speak with the minister Paul and Talon. We went to see the IG, the Inspector General of Police, and we say no more. How many women are in politics that you have to burn one down? And what was? Why should she even be be attacked at the polling uh, booth? Oh, it's in, a story in, for you know, day. why <laughs> would she? How many women are in politics? How many men are being burned? And we say no more. Yes, people are doing quite a lot. I can tell you that. And as, as recently as last week. That's a good thing in the right direction. But and that's one person, or that's one group. No, 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 it's no, not a group. no, no, it's no, a, no, it's no, a no, convergence no, no, of women. I know, I know, I know. Why I said that? that that's, a, that's a good thing in the right direction. I mean, they've actually set up uh, the pace for, in case of other th things like this happening. We've we know, the conversation. We know, we know we really need to come up and express ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not been happening in the past. Okay. This will not be the first time. You know, but I'm I'm glad that women came together to lend their voice that enough is enough. We don't want any more of this. And that's how it's supposed to be. Um, part of the things, and I was at the side event for, for, for political participation. One of the things we're saying is we want this 35% uh, uh, um, representation or affirmation. We're saying we don't want tokenism. But that's we don't how want it you telling us to step down for a man. We don't want to step down. Mm. We want to go there and vote. But that's we want what it to is. go there and run. We're saying no more. But the, when and women we had ask a charter the, of demand, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Tisha, yes. when women ask for, give us 35 percent. It's like you're begging for. No, it. we're not begging. It's is a global right? thing. It it's is a, it's right? a global thing. It's a right. It's, it's, it's a right. It's, it's, it's global. It's a right. Yes. So why are you not taking it instead of asking for it? We're taking it, but there are barriers along the way. So let's break it down. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but again, talking about grassroots, and you, you made a very beautiful, um, back, gave a big, beautiful background to it. Again, I'm going to ask education, and I'm not talking about pen to paper. I'm talking about how many women at the grassroots level know their rights. Politically, do they even know what voting is in essence? Because you know there are people who show up and they need people to tell them what to do. Print. So Which that's is not a bad thing because it, then it means that they didn't go to school and they needed to be. Of course, but you know we have town hall meetings. We, I, I, I'm, I'm shocked that in the 21st century we're still making it look like women are not smart. We had the likes of Queen Amina and people who led. So it's not that we don't know how to lead, mm -hmm. but think times are changing. The voting systems have changed, but what happened to town hall meetings for women? What happened to the party setting up internal governance system and internal structures to, to bridge the gap between um, participation of women and men. Why don't we have a balance? Number one. Okay. Number two, generational gap. What is wrong with parties saying we want to bridge the generational gap? Secondly. Thirdly, what is wrong with our women leaders in the parties? Do we have to wait? Because you just started with government and I, it, that ticks me off. You, do we have to wait? Because it, it might never happen. When are we, 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 people like you, with organizations like We Lead we, Illuminate, yeah. why do you not go into the nooks and the crannies of the country and start there? Start from the grassroots. Don't do it at the Abuja level or the Lagos level. This is the problem. Let's the not person play the, in the ostrich here. Exactly. There are scores of organizations uh, working with women at the I can tell you the UN Women 
are working. There are quite a number of women organizations and organizations generally working to engage more women. Let's not let's not say there hasn't been but not work. politically. No, they politically, might not be making noise about it. Politically, not they might not be making noise about it. The thing is, it's grassroots. You, it means you that we're, we're talking about going to places like the interiors of Ikorodu, mm -hmm. the interiors of Badagri, the interiors of Ekpe. We're not talking of being at Agege in Lagos, for instance, where community magazines and newspapers can converge and, and report you. We're talking of going to, you know, getting dirty. Mm -hmm. We're talking about you going to where it matters, where a woman lives on less than... 5 naira, 10 naira, 20 naira a day. That's what we're talking about. First of all, the woman wants to survive. Secondly, she's probably frying Gary and finding it difficult to take it to the, to the, to, to the city because there are no roads. So when our women leaders, I will place this blame on the doorstep of our women leaders because that's the responsibility that you have. If you've been asked to mobilize women, and then you go to the women and all you do is give them 5,000 naira empowerment. And it's one of my, my pet peeves. How do you give a woman 5,000 naira for empowerment? What does she actually buy? Well, this stuff from sanitary pads, oh. which is about the base, one of the basic needs of a woman. Mm. 5,000 naira doesn't buy your supplies for a year. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Fine. If this woman runs a meal, a grinding machine, it doesn't buy one. It doesn't fuel one no. for a month. No. So, so this is where, look, we need to get real. This but is where we begin to talk also about think, women leaders but, 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 mobilizing but see, women. As much as you see that, the average person who receives this 5,000 mm. is not thinking that far. This is where Just the my question. Thank you. Solution. And I have asked questions like this and people say, oh, you know, a hungry person is not thinking logically. Which is where she said, what a politician, whether man or woman now, does is to use you. And I would like to add, discard you after the voting. After and we the never election. seem to learn. Why? And we need to now wake up, smell the coffee, and wisen up. If you can afford it. Well, smell the akamu. <laughs> 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 I mean, we need to wake up. If it's happened to you once, maybe that's a mistake. It happens to you a second time. Perhaps, look, it shouldn't happen to you a third time. Then that no. means it's not an error anymore. Then you're being stupid, right? Okay. So, uh, Busola, because we don't have too much time, how do we properly engage grassroots? We, we've talked about all the beautiful things that we need to do, all, all the problems. We're very good in Nigeria at pointing out the problems. I want solutions now on the table. We're watching, everybody's watching. Education is also, is also important. Education. Are you asking a grandmother in Ikorodu mm -hmm. to go back to school? Well, it's not, that's, not the, that's not the education I'm talking okay. about. Education I'm talking about is you go to them, you go to them to their doorsteps. You tell them, you educate them, you let them know what it is all about, their rights. You tell them, we we'll continue to do that. I mean, I'm sure we'll get out of this. It's not enough asking for votes at no. the, at, for local government elections or whatever election uh, levels. It, it, what we are, you're asking for solutions. One of the solutions is going there and having a town hall meeting. And when you have that, the, the town hall meetings is to tell the women, to get here by boat has been difficult. Mm -hmm. We can tell that you're finding it difficult to move your farm products or produce from here to where you need to sell and make money. When you vote us in, this is what we're going to do to make this better for you. And I'm the woman saying, well, I've heard this story before. I'm sure they do. Some people do. And I am a woman who's saying, ah, well, I've heard this story before, right. and after you got into office, we were totally cut off. In fact, it got worse than it was before you even asked for our vote. So why should we believe you? Well, everyone's got the, the right to say so. And I'd, I'd said somewhere, somebody said I should keep quiet. I should not amplify that. But I'm going to say it here. There is no, nothing wrong in people saying we're boycotting the elections. 
but when we, we, you boycott once, you boycott a second time. I want to see who, who voted for you because we, we all boycotted here. We didn't vote. But there have been times where people boycotted elections and results were produced. No, Definitely. not. I, I don't think it was uh, pervasive. I, didn't, I think some people, uh, ha, um, some people um, were snitches and so they went to vote. So then when some people go to vote and others don't but vote, But isn't that a problem in there Nigeria is because to there is no unity of purpose. So. And then because of our experience, that's what we're saying. We're now at that crossroad we, based on our experience to say, you know what? No more. We have been taken for a ride for so long and it's just not going to happen again. You have said you would do this. It's many years after. I've been to some places uh, at Ibutse Meta and I cringe like, are you serious? This is the road? And they say, oh, but there is a politician who's active right now, has of assembly and all of that, who lives here <laughs> on the streets like this. And you people, why do we even have this culture of rank a day day to people who don't do nothing? <laughs> this is an interesting conversation. Busala, <laughs> final words. Final words. It, there, there have been sayings in certain courses that you push a Nigerian to the wall, he creates space in the wall. <laughs> How long, and, and then we're very good at complaining. I was interviewing someone yesterday and he said, oh, it's an African thing. We, we're very comfortable with complaining behind our keypads and our Twitter and Instagram, but we're never moving to action. That's cowardice. Yes, yeah, so how do we go beyond well, I, this? I believe that um, one day we will bounce back because if you keep pushing and we keep pushing. I think I've been hearing that pushing, since I was a teenager, we'll bounce back. I we will, when we're we, gonna will do that. we will, and that time is coming. And that time is coming when we will say, no, enough is enough. So it means we're not tired yet? We'll get there. I was trying to do an article, you know, based on the, this hate speech thingy. And I said to myself, one of the paragraphs, I haven't released it yet, I haven't published it. And one of the paragraphs I said, do this singing, dancing, grassroots women even understand what's going on? Can they go back to these politicians they voted in to say, we are hearing about this. Can mm -hmm. you please explain, does it mean that you're going to be killing our children for saying, for disagreeing with you or for pointing out things that they feel are not normal, are not, should not be? Have you seen them organize themselves to do that because it's about survivor it's about the now and it will come to a time when even those women mm. will realize that they've been taken for a ride that this shouldn't be but you see they won't come to that point if people like you like me and like you Busola, don't keep saying what we're saying so yeah? you're saying keep preaching the message one day? We're not preaching, we're saying, we're telling it as it is. We're saying, no more, don't do this. Do you know, do you know the implication of this? I think some of us need to get back to the grassroots to say, yeah, the election is over, but it's a, it's a cycle. Mm. Yeah? It's a cycle that's going to come back, and they're going to come back to you. Um, would you want to vote for this same party or this other party again, knowing that if your child says, ah? But you have not provided this one that you said you will provide. And they say, now we're going to kill you. <laughs> okay, we've got to go. Thank you very much, uh, Akinade Funket Treasure. She's the executive team lead, Illuminate Nigeria. And of course, Busala Faiga Okpolu, broadcast journalist. Thank you, ladies. Very Thank interesting you. conversation. Thank you very Fiery much. one. Well, we will take another break and we'll be talking about involving women from an early age, getting them interested from primary and secondary school. Stay with us. We'll be right back.